What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're going to conclude our Golden Age comic book conservation project on this copy of All Star Comics number 55 from 1950. You're not going to want to miss it. We're going to refold the spine of this comic book, give it a final press, and then Look at the final before and after comparisons. I'm really pleased with the results, and I'm excited to share them with you today. Thank you for joining me. If you enjoy this video, please hit the like button. If you are subscribed to the channel, thank you sincerely. If you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when we have new videos going up. And if you're not subscribed yet, please do so. It helps us reach a wider audience here on YouTube and create more of a community around our favorite hobby, comic book conservation. In case you missed it, in episode one of this series, we did a complete walkthrough of the book, assessed the condition, paying special attention to any defects that affect grade, as well as use of the comic book and permanence of the paper. We determined we had a mostly solid and complete comic book that presented reasonably well and could be read with some care, but with some significant flaws. These include a severe spine roll, a piece missing to the cover, some chipping along the right edge of the front cover, and a severely tanned cover to the point of the paper being brown in the most severely tanned areas. The interior pages were, for the most part, beautiful, with off-white to cream pages and only a few minor flaws, including a pulled top staple on the centerfold, and a few very small tears on the reading edge of the first few wraps. We estimated the grade at approximately a 3.0, or good, very good. We developed a conservation plan for this comic book that includes assessment and documentation, disassembly, wet clean and deacidification of the cover with tear seals and paper reinforcement, and the same treatment of the interior wraps as well. After we get everything cleaned, mended, and dried back out, we'll reassemble the book without the spine roll and give it a good finishing press. If the conservation is successful, we can expect a comic book that has cleaner and brighter paper with a new lease on life, usability, and permanence. The comic should have an improved grade and also be easier to read without risking further damage and the natural lifespan of the comic should be extended by a century or so by virtue of the deacidification we'll perform. It should also present much better and all around be a better collectible. I intend to send it to CGC to be graded and enter it into my CGC registry collection as a placeholder until I can find a high-grade copy of this rare comic book for my collection. In episode 2 of this project, we disassembled the comic book setting the staples aside for reassembly, preserving their location and orientation information. Then we did a few more measurements of the paper quality and dimensions of the cover and set it aside for deacidification, tear seals, and reinforcement at a later date. In episode 3, we did an aqueous deacidification bath of the first interior wrap with a calcium hydroxide solution and also performed archival tear seals with Japanese paper and a methyl cellulose glue. These methods are reversible and considered by CGC as conservation, so when performed correctly, do not result in a purple, restored label if you submit to CGC for grading, which we intend to do with this book. In episode 4, we reviewed the results from our wet clean and tear seal procedures on the first inner wrap, and I showed you the method I use for washing the rest of the inner wraps in a fraction of the time by washing two wraps at a time and using a surfactant and warm water. I also showed you how to use a heated press to speed up dry time dramatically. This golden age treasure has 12 inner wraps plus the cover. So these techniques will help us get the entire book conserved in a reasonable amount of time so we can get it off to CGC. In episode 5, we return to work on the cover. 
we took some additional measurements of the dimensions of the cover, and then we wet cleaned and deacidified the cover before moving on to paper mending. We reinforced the entire spine with Japanese paper and methyl cellulose glue. We also performed tear seals and reinforced the right edge of the front cover where there was considerable damage to the paper owing to the significant spine roll this book experienced at some point in its nearly 74 year history. In episode 6, we looked at the results of our rapid wet clean and deacidification and quantified the paper quality for the different wash methods we used on the interior wraps and concluded there was no discernible difference between the traditional and rapid wash and dry. We then moved on to review the results of the archival wet clean deacidification, tear seals and paper reinforcement with Japanese paper and methyl cellulose of the cover. We trimmed the excess Tengujo paper from the cover and took height and width measurements. We concluded there were no discernible dimensional changes of our cover after all of our conservation procedures, contrary to conventional wisdom that aqueous bath will tend to result in dimensional changes in Golden Age comic book covers. Lastly, we looked at the paper quality of the cover before and after conservation. We used no harsh chemical or photo bleaching, and our goal was to deacidify the cover and restore paper permanence while preserving the beautiful vibrant inks and gloss of the cover. This meant only a modest whitening of the paper, but I think the result is a very satisfying creamy paper that connotes the age of the comic book while still presenting as supple and pliable. In episode 7, I took all 13 of the conserved pages of our 70-plus year old comic book and reassembled them in order. I used a light box to get the staple holes as close as exactly where they were originally placed during manufacturing as possible, and then I replaced the staples. Once I had all the wraps properly aligned and the staples reinstalled, I placed the reunited stack of pages back into my humidity chamber in preparation for re-establishing the spine fold and giving this comic book a final press. I've created a playlist for this project. You can check it out to see all the videos in the series by following the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Alright, we are in the end game now. I've had the reassembled wraps in my humidity chamber for the past 24 hours. I originally laid them in flat, and then after 12 hours, I gently folded the wraps over and I let the humidity and gravity start to refold this comic book gradually, and you see the result is it's already close to having a fold reestablished. I pulled the comic book out of my humidity chamber and placed it on a piece of silicone release paper on my slab of granite. I have a Silver Age backer board from which I've already cut out reliefs for the staples and I'm going to place the backer board into the centerfold to assist in re-establishing a nice even fold in this 70 year old comic book. I've preheated my tack iron to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Now because of the severe spine roll that this comic book came to us with, our main job here is to try to undo that spine roll. So I'm pulling this rear cover around and toward the edge of the backer board that's in the center fold. And I'm keeping pressure there. I'm sort of pinching it down. And then I'm going to use my tack iron and just very gently roll it over the book with obviously a piece of silicone release paper between the tack iron and the book. So again, I'm sort of trying to roll the book around toward this back side to undo the spine roll that it's experienced for who knows how many decades before it came to us. And I'm just trying to put a little bit of heat and a little bit of pressure into the spine. Obviously, in addition to pulling this rear cover toward this edge, 
I'm making sure that the top and bottom edges are square and that we have a similar overlap. And I'm here, I'm looking at the front cover. And you've seen me sometimes turn this over and do a little bit of tack ironing on this side. But with this severe spine roll, I think all the book really needs is for this spine roll to be undone. And the way that I'm doing that is I'm basically unrolling it here. I'm pulling this back cover in the opposite direction of the original spine roll. And you can see if you look at that top edge where the shadow is thicker, that's because I'm pulling that around and it's forcing that part of the paper upward. And now if we pinch that tight and we use the tack iron, we can push that paper back down and establish the fold in the correct spot. This cover is wider than the wraps. So we are going to have on the reading edge, we're going to have overlap both. We're going to split the difference and leave a little bit of overlap on the back and on the front cover relative to the interior wraps. And as long as we keep that uniform, and that's the way it was manufactured, that's the best I think we can do for this book. So I'm satisfied with the location of the fold now, and what I'm going to do is just spend a bit more time and apply a bit more pressure, where with the first pass with the tack iron, I really was barely putting any pressure at all. It's basically the weight of the tack iron plus a little bit very gently applying pressure here. Once I'm comfortable that I've established the fold where it needs to be, you can see I'm actually pushing down on the tack iron now. I'm not really white knuckling it, but I'm firm. Let's have a look at it. Front cover looks like it's aligned exactly where I want it to be. Again, that reading edge is going to be hanging over the interior paper. That's just a consequence of how the book was manufactured. Short of trimming it or doing something else crazy, there's nothing we can do about that. I think this book is now ready to go in the press. So here's my eighth inch aluminum plate that I put in my seal press. I have two magazine backer boards already on the plate. I'm going to leave the book right on this SRP. So I'm going to set the silicone release paper right on those magazine backer boards and center it up. This book does still have a lot of humidity in it, and I would like for the water vapor to be able to escape. So I'm going to use regular paper that's 110 pound cardstock on top, and then two magazine backer boards rather than SRP top and bottom. And now that I have my stack, remember I left the backer board in the centerfold with the relief cutouts for the staples. So you've seen my entire stack here for the press. I'm going to put the aluminum plate in my seal press, flip it on. My seal press is set to 155 degrees Fahrenheit, and all we're going to need in there is 15 minutes press. And here we are the next day with a reveal. I let it cool in the press and then I pulled it out the next day. Again, the, the top stack is two magazine backer boards and a piece of 110 pound cardstock. And boy, does that look nice, huh? Look at that cover. Bottom stack is two magazine backer boards plus the SRP. Time to very gently remove this backer board from the center fold, especially because we have this leading edge, which has seen a lot of damage over the years, and it's just held together right now with Japanese paper, so I want to be very gentle with that edge, of course. First impression, wow, what a transformation. This book looks really great considering our starting material and the fact that I bought this from the original owner just a few years ago. Unbelievable. He bought it as a kid off the newsstand. Look at the cover gloss. And this is one of the reasons why we did not aggressively whiten this book. 
I wanted to preserve these inks and this beautiful cover gloss, which has lasted 70 plus years. The rear cover looks just as nice as the front. Beautiful gloss, beautiful inks, brightened up. Let's have a thumb through the interior. I showed you the interior before and after results last episode. We brightened this paper up one to two steps on the Overstreet whiteness level card. And I just couldn't be more pleased with this outcome. What a beautiful comic book. Let's have a look at some still images. The overall presentation of the comic book has improved dramatically. Correcting that spine roll made a big improvement in the appearance, the inks appear brighter, and the correction of the creases and bends to the cover all contribute to both preservation of this comic book and making it look so much better than what we started with. Here it is on the left in the before condition and on the right in the after condition. Correcting that spine roll has made a huge improvement on the presentation of the book. The yellows in particular are much brighter in the after condition. We preserve these beautiful pink and almost fuchsia and the reds. And this is a consequence of the conscious decision we made not to overdo the cleaning of this book. We also had quite a few creases and bends in the cover that were especially evident in this black background. You can see them around the left, right, and below Green Lantern here. And these were all eliminated with our pressing and make a big difference on the overall impression of the book. Here's the back. You can see that we still have some condition issues, right? You can see the remnants of the spine roll. We have this piece of paper missing mid-spine here. We still have that jagged edge that we can see from the front cover. But look when you see the two, the before and after side by side. You see that we corrected this spine roll again for a dramatic improvement. And there was a lot of whitening. Even though our new book does not appear to be brilliant white, it's much brighter than what we started with. And that's what we were going for here. Overall, I think we hit this one out of the park. And we accomplished every goal we had with this comic book. I'm particularly proud of the balance we achieved in cleaning, deacidifying, and preserving this comic book while not bleaching out the beautiful and vibrant original 70 plus year old inks and gloss on this cover. Remember, we left what conservators call an alkaline reserve in the paper that will preserve this beauty against future breakdown caused by acid-catalyzed hydrolysis of the paper fibers that is normally the natural fate of all pulp paper. It's relatively easy to bleach one of these books and whiten the pages with photo and chemical bleaching, but the art and science of conservation is about balancing preservation and presentation, and I think we nailed it with this particular book. The before and after pictures clearly demonstrate that not only did we not bleach or fade these vibrant inks out, they actually appear more intense with the grime of a few decades removed from them and the underlying paper brightened up just a bit. We also demonstrated with meticulous measurements that we did not induce dimensional changes to the cover with our conservation efforts. We estimated the initial grade of this comic book at approximately a 3.0, or good, very good, and I think our final result is a comic book that is approximately a 4.0, or very good. I think that is the best we could have hoped for given the structural flaws the comic book has, and I think we did right by this comic book. I hope you enjoyed this video series on the conservation of this golden age treasure as much as I enjoyed putting it together. I intend on sending this comic book off to CGC for grading, but I like to control costs of grading by sending in as many comic books as I can for each tier. So it may take me a few weeks to get this one off for grading as I prepare some other books to send in with it. When I do get this comic book back from grading, we'll add one more video to this series, but for now our work is done here and we'll move on to another project soon. If you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another.